So clinical trials are how we really move the needle and improve patient outcomes, both in terms of um, survival as well as quality of life. And all of the most effective therapies that we have, the way that they have been approved is through clinical trials. So that's really how we are making progress in this disease. Um, Brentoximab is a perfect example that was studied in clinical trials in the relapse setting and then in the frontline setting. And now this is really changed the game for a lot of patients, particularly with anaplastic large cell lymphoma. So it's it's first important to understand that um, anything that's being studied in a clinical trial has already been rigorously tested, that um, these are agents that have already gone through several lines of um, testing before they ever make it into humans, including showing that they have effects you know, on, on these specific tumors in cell lines, then in, in animal models, and depending on what phase of a clinical trial, there, there may have also been extensive studies in, in humans as well, or within a different disease type. So these are, uh, these are drugs that really have already been through extensive testing before it, it's first introduced. And the other is understanding a little bit in terms of what, what the goals of the clinical trial are, depending on what type of a phase that you're on. So a phase one clinical trial is usually, um, it's either a first in human or it's kind of early on in the process. And we're trying to understand a little bit about how your body processes this therapy and what, what types of side effects there are. For phase two, it typically means it's already been through phase one, so we know a little bit more about the toxicity. And at this point, we're trying to understand how effective this is at killing the cancer cells. Um, what are the response rates? What is the survival? And phase three are those randomized trials where you're trying to figure out, is this therapy better than what we have to offer as part of standard of care? When we started understanding peripheral T cell lymphoma a little bit more, we've started learning about the genetics and what really drives these lymphomas. And so we're starting to get a little bit more what we call subtype specific. Um, so that includes certain combinations of therapies that, for example, target mechanisms of how genes are regulated. We call this epigenetics. So this includes things like uh, ramadopsin and belinistat, which are already approved for this disease, but they've also been combined with additional agents um, that target similar mechanisms. Those are things like azacitidine, which is approved for different types of blood cancers, um, as well as valimetastat, and there's a bunch of others that have uh, been studied in combination with very high response rates, particularly in some subtypes. There's also some um, uh, targeted therapies that target kind of some downstream pathways that have to do with how uh, tumors grow and proliferate. Um, those are uh, targeting a mechanism called PI3 kinase, um, things like duvalisib, which has been approved previously for CLL, but um, has also shown a lot of activity within peripheral T cell lymphoma. There's cellular therapies and CAR T cell therapy that are also being studied and have shown some early really impressive results, as well as what we call bispecific antibodies, which is a drug which um, almost has like two ends, one which uh, attaches to the lymphoma cell itself and the other which targets an immune cell to bring them close together so that the immune cell can kill the cancer cell essentially.